Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and this is a Unify Express, which is a router and a Wi-Fi 6 device. It also has Unify OS, and it also has a Unify network controller, and it's only using less than 10 watts, and this whole device is only 149. I'm impressed with the overall packaging and price, and as many of you who may have followed my channel before know, I am critical of many of the Unify routing devices for being a little bit lackluster, but with this price tag of 149 and having all the mentioned features, this is not that lackluster. I think this is a good feature and price match. Now, I bought this device myself because I really wanted to do some testing. People were asking about it. It was not sent to me or anything by Unify. This was me purchasing it and then using it as my home router with my devices and my streaming and my Wi-Fi. I did have to add one more Wi-Fi to cover all the devices in my house, but that's actually a feature this has is being able to adopt other Unify access points and switches. Let's dive into the review of this and we'll talk about what it can do and some of the shortcomings of what it can't really do. So let's get started. We're going to start here at the Unify site and here as of recording late December 2023, yes, it's sold out. I was lucky enough from the time it was first released to see it sold out then find a moment when it was in stock, but now it's back to being sold out. But I think that actually speaks to the good value proposition that this provides packing a lot into a small device at a reasonable price. Moving down here, the built-in Wi-Fi 6 2x2 two two MIMO, the 1500 square foot single unit coverage. They say single unit because, well, even up here mentions, and we'll talk about some deployment options, this can work by itself or with other units. And it doesn't just have to work with other Unify Express units. This will actually mesh with other Unify access points that you adopt to it. The 60 plus Wi-Fi connected devices refers to how many Wi-Fi devices to connect to this device. But once again, if you add more Unify access points, you can have more devices on here. The one gig RJ45 WAN port, the one gig RJ45 LAN port. So no two and a half gig on this device, but for this price point, I think this is probably why they kept them only at one gig. We do have the little LCM to status display, so that works quite well. It's tiny, but novel because it gives you some indication of what's going on with the system. And then down here, manages up to four additional unified network devices when operated as a gateway. I'm using this in gateway mode and I was able to adopt a couple other devices, one switch and one access point, but whatever combination of switch and access points you come up with, five is the maximum. So this really is targeted probably at the small home user or really even most home users. I think just a couple access points, depending on to get to the really large houses will probably cover most people's needs. Now, as far as what's in the box, this is it. You don't have anything else. You get the device, you get USB-C power and a RJ45 network cable. Now I've tested this and it has a max of 10 watts that it says it pulls and it generally stayed below that 10 watts even in some of the load testing I was doing at speed. Now they do have their technical specs page which does cover just how small this device is. So 98 by 98 by 30 millimeters or 3.6 by 3.6 by 1.2 inches. So yes, it's really tiny, fits on a shelf. Fits really anywhere, small networking closet. And I thought the heat was reasonable on it. It does get a little warm, but not too warm. The max 10 watt power consumption is noted here. The one thing that is missing though, is the processor in there. So I SSH'd in, looked at the CPU. It's just a Qualcomm processor in this, nothing too fancy. Initial setup of the device was really simple. And one thing I really like, even though it asks you to sign into UI, they did not make it hard to find at all the proceed without an account button. So no, this does not need to be tied to a cloud in order to set it up. That makes me really happy. Now, once in the device itself, you can go to the Unify OS settings. We see that the network is up to date. We see I'm on the official release channel and by default, but of course changeable, the auto update is turned on both for Unify OS and the applications. I think by default on is the best way to set these because too many people never update things and causes a lot of security problems. So by default, it will do this. But for those of us who are more advanced and want to choose when we update or choose even the non-official, maybe we want the release candidate early access options. We have those advanced options available to us. Of note, unlike the larger options, such as the Dream Machine Pro, you'll notice that the only thing in here is, is the network controller. This does not have support for the other Unify features right now, such as Talk or the Unify NVR and a few other options they have. I don't think there'll be a feature where it has more of those options just due to the limitations of processor on this and just how small of a device it is. Now, before we get into the dashboard, I do want to talk about deployment options because they made this a little bit unique. 
they have the ability to mesh these to other Unify Express devices. So you can get a standalone one and use it as your network router at your home, or you can mesh it to other Unify Expresses. This has the added advantage of when you mesh these together of having not only another Wi-Fi access point, but also using the wired option. Now I only have one, so I did not test this to confirm that this works, but it's supposed to work where they mesh. And then you can also attach a wired device on the other end of the other one. So if you have a computer upstairs that you like to have hardwired, you don't have a direct path to get the wiring in there, you'd be able to tie one of the Unify Expresses to another Unify Express and then also have that hardwire access point up at the top. But of course, you're still going to have the latency problems that come with Wi-Fi meshing. Now, something else worth noting is you can mesh it with more than just another Unify Express. You can adopt up to four other access points or up to a switch and three more access points or three switches and one more access point because there's only a four device limit on this, but it will mesh with the other access points that you adopt. I think that's actually a really nice feature that I have it adopted to a Unify ACLR and then I can put it in mesh. And this is a pretty ideal situation because a lot of people may not want to buy another Unify Express when some of the other devices are a little bit cheaper and will also do the same thing. And I think this could be really good for people who want that extra connectivity in other areas of the house where they can't get direct wiring to. And although direct wiring is always going to be better and more performant because you are using some of the Wi-Fi to get to the other device, uh, which causes more latency because you've got more hops in the mix, it does work and will get connectivity to those other areas. Now, once you log into the Unify dashboard, it looks much the same as any other Unify dashboard. This is version 8024, which is current as of December of 2023. We have our traffic identification, Wi-Fi technology, most active clients. It even shows that the Unify Express is meshed to a UAP ACLR, because that's what I used for my testing when I was testing this for being my home router. Now we have the topology maps, which work the same as they do in any Unify. Then we have all of the client device options. So you can see all the devices, click on any of these devices and get more details about them. The port manager works much the same and does support VLANs. With the radio tuning option, it does allow you to control the Unify Express as well as the other adopted access points. This device does support traffic identification and of course, traffic filtering. You can do this on a client level or you can do this on a global level. Now the system does have VPN support, including the teleport VPN, the magic site to site, the VPN server supported, and we can create a new one to show you. We have WireGuard, OpenVPN, and L2TP. I tested WireGuard to figure out just how fast it would go, and it's just a little bit over 80 megabits a second, so not bad for this type of processor on here. As I mentioned, it's not particularly fast, but at least you have an idea of just how fast you can route through this with a WireGuard VPN. Now, if you want to use this as a VPN client to tie to another device, you do have WireGuard and OpenVPN. And then if you want to use it for site to site, you have only IPsec and OpenVPN. These are not limitations of this device. This is just the current status of the Unify network controller and their gateways. Now, when you come over here to security, this is where there's a difference between this and the Unify Dream Machine Pro and some of the more expensive Unify controllers is even though we have device identification, traffic identification, the ability to do country restrictions and ad blocking, that's it. The other security section that actually does like the threat monitoring and the honeypot option are both missing from this device. And I don't think they're going to put them in. I believe, once again, limitations of this smaller device and the performance of the processor. But even with traffic identification, I had no problems getting gigabit routing to work. Now, when using this device as my home router with all my streaming devices and Chromecasts and people coming over and jumping on the guest Wi-Fi, all that worked great. No problems at all. Where there are a few limitations, though, is that slower speed for VPN. So if you're trying to use this for a policy routing VPN and you were really hoping for really good speeds, you're going to have to look elsewhere. That's a limitation on this. I think this device is good for recommending it to the average home user that doesn't have a real need for anything other than connectivity. It works great for basic connectivity. It works great as an auto update device because many of us have worked in the tech field and had that friend ask, what's that device I can set that I don't want to pay you to manage that I hope automatically updates itself and stays secure? I think this is a good fit for that. As are a lot of the other Unify Dream Machine series because a lot of them have these same features with the auto update and a little bit better speeds. But for 149, this feels like a really solid home user choice. And maybe 
for many of you, it is a good choice. But if you want those more advanced features, this is where the Unify router and kind of has some limitations. An easy example is going to be if you want to do a more custom policy routing config with WireGuard, that's where these fall short. And it's not just this device. This is still my complaints about the way Unify handles routing in general. They don't give you a lot of advanced features such as with OpenVPN. And someone's going to point out that, yes, you can go and SSH into them and start customizing them to get those more advanced features. But that can actually be the challenge because those settings may not persist through updates and may break. So if you don't need any any of those extra advanced features, this is a solid device. If you need those advanced features, well, that's where I may recommend a more advanced firewall. But for the package, the price, and for something that I would recommend to many of my less technical friends to use for routing at their house and Wi-Fi at their house, maybe with a couple extra access points. This thing I think for 149 is a killer deal. The meshing feature, being able to mesh with other devices is really cool. Now, one other note about their other deployment is the ability to, and I'll test this in a future video because I don't completely understand the use case, adopt it to another unified dream machine. That seems kind of odd to me to want to do that. I don't completely understand because it seems more practical to adopt these because they work as access points when you adopt them to Dream Machines. They also, as of the current firmware, do not seem to have the ability to adopt to a self-hosted controller. So if you wanted to deploy these maybe in a business setting and manage them from your controller, that's not an option where you would deploy these to, let's say, a bunch of clients. Now, you can tie them to the Unify Cloud so you can access them that way. That's nice and gives you some monitoring options. But yeah, it's kind of strange that they have this ability to adopt to the Unify controller, but only if it's in a dream machine. And I'll test that in a different video because I have to first take it out of being my home router and then I'll adopt it to the dream machine and see if they play nice together doing that. But hey, overall, it's pretty cool. Adopting it to a few other access points that you have, that makes a lot more sense. But let me know what your use case is or why you want to adopt it to a dream machine and why you think that should be a feature. Leave those thoughts in the comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content from this channel, and I'll see you over in the forums. Thanks.